as you can see, we have light, and I got a new haircut too. This is where all the magic happens. The air passes over the carburetor. Let me try that again. The air passes through the carburetor into the cylinder. That creates a low pressure inside and pulls the fuel out, delivering a fuel air mixture into the cylinder. Now, what we're having trouble with is getting it to run correctly because it's very easy to go out there and find tips for uh, tuning your carburetor, but those are usually 99 out of 100 tips for tuning a gasoline carburetor. We're using alcohol, which means the rules change a little bit, a little bit different. It's got a few more nuances to it. So we were using a 32 and a half. That wasn't really going anywhere. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the start. We're going to throw in a number 20 pilot jet in here and we're going to start from there and we're going to go up gradually and see uh, go up in jet size gradually and see where we land on a good fit now what is a good fit you want a good solid idle running with no more than two and a quarter turns out from stock on the idle screw which is right here or two and a quarter turns out from the uh, fuel mixture screw, which is right here. Now a little bit on those screws. This idle screw right here, the way it works is you turn it in and a bar pushes on the slide valve. As you push in more, it pushes the slide valve up, which lets in more air, which raises your idle. Pull it back, it butts down, or it falls down, lets in less air. The air mixture screw works in a little bit different way. Now there's two types on these Makuni carburetors. This is the front of your car. This is the rear of your car. If your mixture screw is on the front of your car, it controls fuel. If it's on the rear of the car, like on this model, it controls air. So that means as I tighten the screw, it lets in less air, resulting in a richer mixture. If I loosen the screw, it lets in more air, which is a leaner mixture. What I was noticing running the 32 and a half jet, or pilot jet, was that I had to have the mixture screw pulled out two and a half turns from being fully loose. So that means I was leaning out the, I was having to way lean out the mixture in order to get it to run right, which is not supposed to happen. So that's why I decided to go back to basics. Let's start at the number 20, which is what our equation earlier told us should be the correct uh, pilot jet. And we'll move up from there and see what we can do to get it to work. Also, I've noticed that when we get up to full throttle, there has been some issue with popping in the exhaust and that can uh, indicate a lean condition in there. So I'm going to drill this jet out a few more sizes. I've got a number 55, a number 54, and a 53 drill bit in order to do that. This jet, number 130, is uh, 0.05 inches in diameter. So this should raise it up 20 thousandths. Yep, 20 thousandths. A number 55 will raise it up 20 thousandths, and we'll just go from there. We're looking for a, uh, a nice clean up through the rev range and then it comes back down, no popping, no mess, no fuss. So let's begin. Now this is the number 20 pilot jet we're going to install. So like I've shown before, real simple. Yeah, let me screw this in. Considering we're having that lean condition, I'm gonna go ahead and drill that jet out. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different. This is one of the smaller jets specifically the smaller jet that I'm going to use, if I could get in the bag. Right. Specifically, Jump good. Yeah, right? <laughs> specifically, specifically, I just like saying that word, I guess. Okay. Oh, I got caught in a place and I can't get my word right. Specifically, I'm going to drill out the stock jet that it came with because even on gasoline, it was too lean for anything. So we're going to drill this out to uh, 0.0520 inches, whatever that says. I, I can't think quick enough to say how words to say that. Right. Let's get the drill. Let's 
see, this is the stuff they don't show you in the DVD extras of anything. The, the pain and struggle of trying to open a package. The unboxing portion? Yeah. The, the video. trouble with the unboxing. <laughs> Alright, and remember from our first video, we're just going to use the drill as literally a drill bit holder. We are not going to use power in this. These jets are made out of soft brass, so it's very easy to hand crank them. Oh no. So we have a problem. That's as tight as the drill is going to go. That's not going to hold anything. So now I'm about to do it with my hands. Let's see how well this goes. It's like throwing a needle. <laughs> See if that's in any way comparable in size to the jet we're running. Comparable. Hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't, we know what's wrong. Now we have to remember as well, uh, this is not a number 95 jet anymore. This is bigger than a number 130. And if this doesn't work, well then I'm just going to go find some new jets. Be sure to remind us in the comments next week that it was in fact the, the, that size. Yeah. <laughs> after, we, after we already messed it up. <laughs> yeah, that we did this. Also, please leave comments out there. I would love some comments just on anything. You know. How am I doing? How does this look? Is this doing right? Are you interested in having fun? Can I do this better? Can I do it worse? Is there possibly a way I can do it worse? You know. And then I'm going to set my idle screw and my air mixture screw to a stock level. I'm going to I'm going to set the idle screw or the air mixture screw one turn out from tight. It seems to be a good starting place. Since we're going down so much, I'm going to do it a quarter out. I'm going to start a quarter out from tight and then we'll go from there. And now the idle screw I'm going to set to flush with the outside of the carburetor because that's how it came. But yeah, th this is, that right there was stock, uh, that position. When I took it out of the box, the idle screw was in that position, flush with the sides of the carb. So that's stock. I'm going to tighten this in. Don't over tighten this screw. There is a spring in there and there's a seat. If you over tighten it, you could damage the seat and then you've got a whole host of other problems. So just a little tight. And we notice that it's up and down like that. So we're going to turn a quarter. Just like that. Quarter turn out. And now we're ready. Also remember to put your fuel line back in. Wah, wah. Oh wait, crap, 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 crap. One last thing I need to check. Look at me, I'm moving too fast. 
Remember not to move too fast in anything, right? That's why we don't got fuel dripping here. Hot exhaust. Alright. Fuel drip there, that's okay. At least we know the fuel's running. Is fully rich. I cannot make that any richer. So that means the number 20 jet is not enough for this mode. So we're gonna go ahead and put the 27.5 in. There is a they do make a 25 jet, but I don't have one. So we're gonna go with the 27.5, see if that can even out the idle. And then I'm going to enlarge the jet I have in there, the main jet, a little bit more to see if maybe that helps the popping a little bit. All right, this is with the drilled out jet and a 27 and a half. Let's see how it goes. Idles well. Now we're going to get an actual engine stand for this thing. Just that one more wire. Why not? It's one more little thing. It's not oh, gonna take long. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gonna, let's open up the jet full the way we got it because we're close. We're close. You notice that the pops have been getting better. Yes, yes, most definitely. Better. Yeah, we are close to where we want to be. One, you two. want to. But we're rolling. We're good. All right, ready?
Sounds a lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> All right, so we've got that situated. Next time, I'm gonna come in here and we'll get started on the data logger. I want to get readings off of this. We can also start looking, or start planning on when to tear down that other engine that uh, I screwed up. <laughs> We all screwed up on. <laughs> we could start looking at tearing that down and possibly making, or yeah, possibly making a gasoline counterpart out of it. If that one won't be usable, then we'll just buy another one and make a gasoline counterpart. That way we can stick a data logger on that as well and we can start comparing uh, what happens in the motor and getting readings off of it. So that'll be good. Tune in next time. Yep, tune in next time, huh? <laughs> <laughs>